Okay, so what we have here is a 2004 Jeep Liberty Limited, and we have some symptoms of a seized caliper. And uh, typically on a caliper, you're going to have a piston that's going to push forward. It's going to compress the pads together around the rotor. And what it will do is retract back somewhat. And there won't be any pressure on it. But what's happening here is it's locking up. So when the piston comes out of the caliper, it's staying in that position. So it's almost like riding the brakes. So your pad is constantly rubbing against the rotor. And other symptoms are you're going to have some pulling. You might smell some burning from the pads. Uh, when you let off the gas, you might have it where the vehicle slows down fairly quickly. Or it just feels like when you're accelerating, it's not shifting properly. It feels like you're driving uphill. So we're going to remove this wheel and uh, get a look at it. Alright, so we're going to get a look at some of the things we're going to need here for the job. We have a drip pan, because we are going to have to bleed once you open up uh, and replace the caliper and you allow air into the brake system you're going to have to bleed it so that's what we're going to have to do we got various tools we got some brake lubricant we have some brake fluid we have a new caliper we have some new brake pads we're going to do both sides down here we have our three ton jack a couple jack stands and here we have our toolbox various ratchets and sockets etc some work gloves and a tire iron so we're gonna get to deciding where we're gonna put this jack, uh, jack underneath and uh, let's get started with it Okay, so here we have our rear caliper. The rotor feels okay. I don't see any, there's no scratching on the rotor, so that should be okay. So what we have here are two bolts, one on top, one on the bottom. We're going to have to take out, and we'll have to work this caliper out of here. And then what I'm going to do is pinch this brake line here without damaging it to stop the flow of the brake fluid so we can get in there and uh, replace it and then we're going to do a gravity bleed and I'll show you how to do that but let's get on with removing this caliper alrighty we are live So I'm going to go ahead here and hope I, you can hear me good. I'm going to go ahead and get these two off. I'm looking at a half inch socket. One on the top, one on the bottom. So let's go ahead and caliper has new bolts so we're not going to have to worry about that
usually like to save them though, because I have a nice backup box of parts. You never know. So now we're going to have to get this off of here, and that's why I have the pry bar. I'll pry underneath it, push it outward. And I might want to try to pound on that caliper there to loosen that piston. Because I don't want to damage this rotor as I'm pulling this out of here. I don't want to scratch it up. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to give that piston a couple whacks. And uh, loosen it up. see the pads have separated from the base of it. Sorry, from all the heat. There's another piece of the pad. This one's the same deal. I think it's stuck. here. Let's go ahead and get this other pad off of here. as we can. Clean up the rotor. caliper off here and you can see the piston is cracked a lot of this is due to the extreme heat it was probably experiencing from it sticking but you can see the piston is cracked so it's definitely no good we're gonna set it off to the side here because we're gonna be removing this bolt here so it probably would have been easier if I left it on here which I just might do a dummy mount here. Just enough so I can get that off. But I want to transfer that to the new one as quickly as possible. I'm going to try to pinch this line off to prevent a lot of fluid from being wasted. And try to do the switch as, as quick as possible to the new caliper. So I'm going to set this off to the side. Without bending the hose too much. You can see the other pads, this one's split in half. Came right off of the base of the pad. 
you can see it's discolored here. Definitely got hot from rubbing. Okay, so I have a 9 16th socket. I did mount the caliper up with one bolt just to, I'd have more leverage to get that off. Now this is the main rubber brake line here. And I do have the other caliper ready. So I'm going to try to make the switch. The bleeder is closed. That way it's, I'm going to open that when it's time to bleed it, but I don't want it spilling all over. I have a drip pan here. So I'm going to put this close by. And the new bolts are also included. The new bolt. Uh, so we're going to use that. So we're going to go ahead and start removing this. And it's no doubt going to start leaking. So we want to make that switch to the other caliper as fast as possible. Got it in the new caliper. I go ahead and tighten it. wiping here. And we're going to set that aside. We're going to just remove the one bolt, get this old one off of here, and then we'll start with the brake pads, putting the brake pads in there, get this mounted, and then we'll bleed it. the old caliper right here. Again you can see the chips in there. Definitely shot. So we have the new one here and we have our pads. I'm going to go ahead and put some, there's these guides here where the pads ride along. So I'm going to put some brake lubricant on those first. I'm going to mount the pads and we'll get this, get the caliper on there. So here we have some brake lubricant. Don't have to get super crazy with it. We're just going to put it on this. guide right here. It'll just help the pads move along on it. That should do that. Now let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and put the pads on. And this pad, this one is designed because of this, looks like a claw coming out of there, it fits inside the piston. It fits right inside, it'll snap in there. So we're going to have this mounted like this. So we need the pads. And you don't want to touch Put any grease on these pads or anything. This one will get pushed in here. Just like that. And we get the other pad. Just like that. 
usually I try to get the bottom in first. Ten minutes later. Okay, well we have our caliper in there. A little bit of work trying to get it in there at the right uh, angle, the right fit. But it did eventually slide on there and the, the bolts lined up and we got them tightened down. And I opened up the bleeder here and you'll see it's dripping. And I'm going to let that go on for maybe 35 minutes. Just let it drip and I'll show you the master cylinder. Okay, now back in the day, you would uh, have someone pump the brakes for you. Then you'd let the bleeder up. It would squirt all over the place. And then you'd do that maybe three or four times to get the air out of the system. Well, this method is a gravity bleeding where I'm going to open up the master cylinder. Uh, we opened up the bleeder and we're just going to let the fluid run through naturally by gravity. Push all the air out. And around 30, 35 minutes, we'll tighten it up test it out see how it goes but you this isn't something you want to walk away from you have to have the fluid ready because that master cylinder you want to make sure it's full all the time because if it drains down and air gets in there you're gonna have a worse problem you're gonna to have to do all of them so with this method I'm gonna keep an eye on it like I said it's not something you want to walk away you just keep an eye on it I'll keep topping it off as we go along and then when our time is up, we'll tighten it up and it should be good to go. Okay, so we're almost done with the gravity bleeding. Just to rehash what I had done, we had removed the old caliper. The bolts came with it. We put the new bolts in. We removed the main brake line going into the caliper from the old one. We used the new washers that came with the new one and the bolt. We attached it as quick as possible to the new one. We have the new pads in here. We have the bleeder open now and we're just letting it gravity bleed for now we're looking at probably about 10 minutes we'll be all done with that then we'll lock that down we cleaned up the rotor so I'm gonna wait for this to complete I probably filled up the master cylinder maybe twice so far just a little bit uh, so 10 minutes will be done and then we'll move on to the other side and it's basically the same thing but I'm not putting a new caliper on the other side that's fine so we're just having the caliper here and just new brake pads on the other side so it's pretty much the same process now I wanted to mention too on these liberties if you were needed emergency brake pads those are located inside of here so there's an adjuster you take a screwdriver and move the adjuster um, until the pads retract a little bit and then you'll be able to pull this drum off. It can be tricky to get the drum off. Sometimes you need a few pounds of the hammer here around these areas but that's where the emergency brake pads are just if you're wondering if you're working on it wondering where, where they are. Okay, so that's it for the Liberty 2004 Jeep Liberty Limited. We have the new caliper on, new brake pads. I'm just going to head over to the other side and do the other side. Same procedure, no caliper, just a pad change. Two bolts, so it is easy. Just wanted to show you how easy it was. I'm trying to keep the video short. You know, some people like the videos longer, some people like them shorter. Uh, but whatever I can do to shorten them up, 
uh, the better, and at least while trying to explain the job that has to be done. Uh, so I hope that I explained it good enough. If you're thinking about doing your own brakes, save some money. I appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.